Hello, I'm Christopher Kenworthy, and welcome to From Cinema 4D to After Effects, a professional workflow. And one of the most important things about getting a professional workflow going is setting things up correctly in the first place. And one thing I always like to do in a course is get you making things that look good quickly, because that's what After Effects users do. And I promise we will start making things look very beautiful very quickly. But if you don't get a few things right at the very beginning, Cinema 4D can be very frustrating and it can upset your After Effects workflow. So I'll show you the quickest way to get this working for you every time you set it up. I've created a new composition here, but we'll just go to Composition and Composition Settings so you can see what I'm working with. This is a standard 16.9 setup at 1920 by 1080 pixels, and the frame rate is 25. There's a lot of debate about what's the best frame rate to use, but these days 25 is a standard for a lot of film and television. Even if you finish at a different frame rate, you'll often find this is what you're working at. So I'm going to use that here, and I've set the duration to 10 seconds with a black background color. This is just going to have an effect on how we set up Cinema 4D. Now to create a Cinema 4D file, I go to File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. This is only going to be a temporary file, so I'll just save it to the desktop and call it Temp. Cinema 4D launches very quickly, and there we are ready to go. Although this screen looks roughly like a 16.9 shape, you may notice there are slightly darker grey bars on the left and the right, and that means it's only this area in the centre that's been used by Cinema 4D. So just click up here on the cube icon, then if I just grab hold of this and move it around, if I put it there, that's actually at the edge of frame. If I move it over here, it's not going to be visible. So I'll just hit save, go back to After Effects, and now to see this in After Effects, I need to drag the temp C4D into my composition, just drag it into the timeline like that, and there you can see that the cube is off the screen, it's not visible. So if I click back on Cinema 4D to bring it into view, it has to be inside these light grey bars. I'll save now, and you should always do that before going back to After Effects. Now I click on After Effects, and it updates, and that's in view. Now you can see this would quickly become very confusing. So in Cinema 4D, you want to set up a template. Something you can come back to every time that's going to work in a way that matches your standard After Effects project. So I'll just delete the cube and I'll work on the render settings. The three buttons here with clapperboards on them, go for the one on the far right, click that, and under Film Aspect, change from Standard 4.3 to HDTV 16.9. It's a bit strange that they view 4.3 as standard because it's not been a standard for a very long time. The frame rate's set to 30, which is a standard frame rate for some broadcast television, but let's switch that to 25 as that's what we'll be working with throughout this course. You can leave everything else as it is, close that up, and now I want to look at the project attributes. So I click on the attributes window over here on the right, so that that's orange, and then I just click this black arrow to the left, which takes me back to the project settings. In here, I also need to make some changes. So I'm going to set the frames per second to 25. The maximum time is currently set to 75 frames. I want 10 seconds at 25 frames a second, so I'm going to set that to 250. And you can see over here on the left we have 250 frames and this slider in the middle allows us to move along those in the timeline. If I click on the right hand arrow here and drag that out you can see all 250 frames come into view along our timeline here. So I like the way that's set up. I would like this to be my default. You can see now that the grey bars at the side are much narrower. It's quite difficult to see but they are and the light grey area matches the 16.9 screen that we'd see in After Effects. Just to check that, I'm going to click a cube and move it over to the very left where it's just touching that darker grey bar. To duplicate the cube, I'll hit Control and drag out a copy of the cube, and then I'll just move this one till it's touching the very right hand side of this darker grey bar. Now I'll hit Save, go back to After Effects, and you can see we've got exactly the same view there. The cubes are just touching the right hand edges. So we're set up correctly. I'll go back to Cinema 4D Lite and it's now important to save this as a template. I'll get rid of my cubes, just delete them because I don't want those to be there every single time. Unlike After Effects, there are lots of menus in Cinema 4D. For this, to save the overall project, you go to this main file menu and go to Save As. And you want to save this as default C4D save that to the desktop. Now I'm going to hide everything 
And now you need to find where the standard default file is. So in my applications folder, I've gone to After Effects CC and inside plugins, I find the Maxon Cinemaware folder and in there, Cineware support. And in there, you'll see there's a default C4D file already. I need to store this somewhere else. So I'm going to open a folder called storage, drag this default into there and make sure that I know it's always there and I can keep it. Now I'll move this first default one to the trash and then I'll drag my new default file into this Cineware support folder. It's a bit of a workaround, but it's worth the effort because I'll now quit Cinema 4D completely, go back to After Effects, delete everything we have, and then I'll just create a new Cinema 4D file, go to File New, Max on Cinema 4D, we'll call this New Test, save it to the desktop, and now you see when that launches, we have a good 16.9 frame, everything's set to 25 frames per second, and we have 10 seconds of footage. Although this takes a few minutes to set up, this will save you so much time. Now we need to look at how things are going to render in After Effects. Let's just add a couple of things to make this more interesting. Click on this cube here and go over to Sphere and now add a light. So I'll just click on light and select a light there. Now everything appears at the point of origin here. So that light is now inside the sphere. So we want to get hold of one of these axes and just pull it out. If I want to render this, I go to the clapperboard on the very left, which just renders the view. Let's make things look a little more interesting by adding a floor. I just click on this button here and choose floor. And you can see that's intersecting with the sphere. So I can hover over the green arrow and just move that down. Now I'll render again. That's looking a little more interesting. Nothing too exciting yet, but we'll get there. Now let's save and go back to After Effects. I'll drag this into my composition. And you can see there that resembles roughly what we're seeing in Cinema 4D, although it's a little lower resolution. And that's because in the Cineware plugin, which is how After Effects sees what's going on in Cinema 4D, our renderer is set to software and display is set to current shading. So it's showing us the same as Cinema 4D. We could change this to wireframe. That can be useful when things are getting complicated and you want a fast render just to test things out. Or you can even go to box, which is even faster, but quite difficult to see. So we'll leave that on current shading. If we want to see this looking a little better, we could change to standard draft. And a lot of the time, this is a great way to work. It's a good compromise between the software and going to standard final, which does all the calculations. There are other ways of saving time. You can check the no pre-calculation box, which just stops Cinema 4D from doing some of the work that it will often do in the background. Just make sure you turn that off before you render your final project. And you can also keep textures in RAM. At this point, that's not gonna make much difference because we haven't applied any textures. But if you have a computer with a lot of RAM, this is definitely worth checking. If you don't have a lot of RAM, don't waste your time, it'll slow things down. The other settings can be left for now. You've now got a basic way to see your Cinema 4D project in After Effects. Anytime you want to make a change, you just go to Cinema 4D, move something, add an extra light, whatever it may be, just always make sure you save, move back to After Effects, and your project will update. With that knowledge, you're now ready to move on to quite complex projects and get things looking good in After Effects.